Uh, we have with us uh, this morning, Mr. Shiva Subramanian, uh, who is the Chief uh, Innovation Officer at uh, the Research Center at IIT Madras. Now, to introduce him, I now request uh, Mr. K.V. Sudhakar. As a usual uh, request to everybody, please keep your video and your uh, audio switched off, excepting for uh, uh, Mr. Shiva and uh, uh, Sudhakar. And uh, do not disturb Shiva when, while he's talking, while he's making his presentation. All queries, all questions to be posted in the chat box, and we will take them up uh, one by one after the talk is over. Uh, Mr. Sudhakar? Yeah, good morning, everybody. It's uh, very nice to meet you at a monthly meeting uh, again. Uh, I was uh, yeah. just uh, thinking that uh, it gives us hope. Our Secretary Vijay Kumar is saying that uh, we might have a physical meeting later on. Maybe, as he says, uh, a quarterly, monthly meeting, uh, a physical meeting uh, would be really nice. Coming to today's program, Mr. Shiva, I like the way he calls himself a, a biomimicry evangelist. <laughs> I think that's a good term <laughs> because uh, talking to him over the phone, I could really feel the passion that he has got for uh, biomimicry. Uh, to tell you the truth, I am not uh, very familiar with biomimicry or I have not gone into the depths of uh, biomimicry or uh, uh, the topic at hand. But uh, I remembered uh, an old song. I don't know, people who know Tamil, I think mostly we know Tamil. Uh, there is an old uh, song by, I think, Kanadasan. Um, which puts the essence of uh, biomimicry. Parave kandan, vimanam padetan, vanoli kandan, vanoli padetan, idruli kandan, vanoli padetan. So this is uh, the term. So I thought uh, that's uh, quite, that's probably what's uh, the essence of uh, biomimicry. And uh, then again, biomimicry is, uh, is uh, innovation by imitating nature, as uh, somebody uh, defined it. So I think that's a good definition. Uh, Mr. Shiva, who is uh, a lawyer by profession, he has got, uh, I think, several facets, and he has been uh, very, very dedicated in uh, doing this uh, program in IIT. Uh, he is innovating, and he is concentrating on uh, biomimic. Uh, I am very happy that uh, he is taking uh, such a uh, esoteric subject. Uh, probably biomimicry is not a very, I think it's uh, a new topic. And of course, uh, I think biomimicry, when you think of it, uh, even uh, goes back to Leonardo da Vinci, uh, where he fashioned a flying aircraft on uh, the model of a bird uh, with flapping wings and all that. And of course, uh, a lot of examples uh, like the Velcro, which is based on the uh, sticky burst which stick to your clothing, the plants. Uh, and of course, uh, fabrics which imitate the water, which does not stick to a lotus leaf. I think uh, a lot of examples can be had. And then uh, probably uh, Mr. Shiva will give us a lot more information on biomimicry. Uh, and uh, I am so happy that he is here today. Without uh, much ado, I invite Mr. Shiva to present uh, his uh, biomimicry presentation. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Sudhakar. It was, uh, you know, um, I, I, I think you're a very, very generous person uh, in the way you, you spoke. I still remember the conversation I had with you. Uh, by the way, uh, for everyone here, Sudhakar and I are neighbors, uh, about four houses away from each other. We have not, we have not met each other physically, uh, which is sad, but I, I hope that happens soon. Uh, I must thank you, uh, thank all of you for, for being here on Sunday. Uh, you know, I, I never for once, uh, in the sense, the minute I called uh, uh, Mr. Sudhakar and I said I want to talk, to, I just discovered the Madras National Society by accident. I was going somewhere and suddenly I, I came up and I said, this is the this is the audience I want to speak to because what I'm really looking for, I'm really looking for kindred spirits. Right? I'm looking for people who are connected in some way or the other to nature. And I'm finding it a little difficult doing that. 
And uh, so when I spoke to Mr. Sudhakar and, and he readily agreed, uh, you know, every time someone agrees to what you think is useful to the world, you feel, you feel a nice sense of relief saying there is at least someone who sees the picture that you are seeing. And uh, so that's what it is. So thank you very much. Um, I, I don't think today would have been, will be possible without all of you. Um, and let's see what happens. Let's see where we can take this. Uh, I, I'm going to be making a presentation, which is, which is not going to be very long, uh, simply to help you. I'm more interested in the questions that you ask so that all of us can learn together. And uh, maybe there'll be a question that I have never been asked before, which will be useful for me and my, my work and all that. And uh, the invitation to all of you is if you find what you are, what you're learning, what you're seeing uh, to be useful, please write to me. Uh, do not hesitate and let's all uh, you know try and find out if we can take this uh, in a in a more meaningful way more uh, you know, more um, can can be a little more uh, crowded uh, can the world become a little more crowded with people like us right so let me let me jump straight into the presentation uh, okay just to introduce myself i uh, i i started off my life in 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 Madras. i used to work with the taj coromandel i was a, i was a front office assistant at the taj and uh, from there, I moved on to law. I was practicing uh, constitutional and, and matrimonial law at the Madras High Court. And from there, I went to TCS, Tata Consultancy Services. I was there for about 20 years. For the last five years now, I teach uh, at IIT Madras. I teach uh, creativity, you know, biomimicry, and entrepreneurship. And I also work at the Desh Pandey Center, where what we are really trying to do is, uh, you, know, you see, faculty in IIT Madras have two basic roles, which is to teach and to do research. The question you're asking is, can faculty also become entrepreneurs? Which means they, they generate lots and lots of ideas in their, in their lab, but is there an opportunity for them to make their ideas into, uh, get into, into in, you know, make their ideas commercial? So that's what I do. And so um, biomimicry happened to me about six months ago, and I'm hoping that, uh, that, will, that, that I'll be able to carry on with this, this work. So that's the uh, thing. Let me share my screen. <coughs> So this is the presentation. Yeah. yeah. Can you see the presentation? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So. Um, Excuse me, uh, there is somebody's uh, mic on. Can you kindly switch off? Uh, somebody's house, I don't know. There's a lot of background sound. I've done it, Vijay. Done, done. Yeah, okay. Thanks. So, um, I, you know, I'm just... Um, so, the, this is the agenda for today. Um, I, I have about 40 minutes, uh, I, I am told. So, maybe less than that, I'll try and use. Uh, so I'm just going to talk about three things. What is biometry, the biometry process, and applying the process so that you know it makes sense to us saying we not only learn biometry, but we also try and apply it in real life and all that. And so um, what is biometry? That's what it is. Uh, it is innovation inspired by nature. I started this about seven months ago. I, I, I started looking at new ways of teaching innovation. And suddenly I said, wow, this is there, right? I, I mean, why am I not even looking at it? because it's innovation inspired by nature. And of course, the definition of biomimicry is practice of adapting nature's best ideas. That means nature is already generating ideas. And can we bring it out? Can we bring out those ideas and actually invent for, for ourselves? Which, which makes nature a fantastic teacher, right? 3.8 billion years old. I mean, I, I never knew I was always looking for teachers. I've always been surrounded by teachers, but I never even realized that there is this teacher amongst us who is much older than any one of us and that I can learn from her. So the, the third line, I think, is very telling. Uh, I just don't learn about nature. I also learn from nature. So essentially, this is what biomimicry is, adapting nature's best ideas. Um, again, you know, I would normally not have put this slide up for a, for a student audience because it wouldn't have made too much sense to them. But you know, for your, for people like you who, who are constantly in love with nature, I think this is where the connection between what you are seeing and what you are doing will happen. <coughs> it's conscious emulation of life genius. 
so consciousness is I'm intention, right? My intention is to imitate nature. Uh, learning from living things is important to me. I and therefore the belief that living thing, uh, the belief that nature is a great engineer, the, that nature has already solved all of human problems that we are grappling with. That's the belief, and that's why he emulate. And finally, recognize that life outside, outside my balcony, there's a life which is genius, right? Which which is actually survived so many catastrophes, which which is constantly inventing. So can I can I recognize that that and and in spite of the constraints, okay, that's the word there. Look at look at the next slide. Um, this is, of course, this is just a redefinition of biomimicry, emulate the technology of nature. Uh, what is the aspiration? My aspiration to emulate is therefore to create life that is conducive to life. I don't want to, dis by doing something, I don't want to destroy. I actually want to make life. And we will see that later on. What I am trying to do at IIT Madras is to reconnect. What I'm trying to do now is to reconnect all of us, right? For instance, if, if, I, if I walk around the campus, you can find lots and lots of professors and scientists using biomimicry. But then why is it not popular yet? Why has it not come back to, to all of us and, 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 and help us use it and all that is what I'm trying to do, bring biologists, engineers, designers, businesses together. Um, what are we mimicking? Uh, we are mimicking um, essentially three things. One is we mimicking form. Uh, so how do we mimic form? The example of form is, of course, this must be, you know, uh, you must have got bored by now with this example. But in any case, it's a brilliant example of form. Uh, so there, there, is, uh, there is the story of the Shinkansen train. Uh, it was making too much of noise inside the tunnel. It was, it was, when it was exceeding the sound barrier, it used to cause that boom. And all the neighbors were upset and things like that. So the, the, the engineer had a problem. He had a problem of resolving this. Now, he could have turned to anything. He could have turned to the normal way of doing things by reducing the noise and all that. But, but fortunately for us, fortunately for us, he was also a bird watcher, like any one of you. And he looked at the kingfisher and he said, wait, the kingfisher has a, you know, when the, the, king, when the kingfisher dives into the water, it is called what is called the splash thrust drive, dive. And suddenly he asked himself, what is the meaning of that? Why is the kingfisher's beak constructed that way? And can I pick up the engineering technology of the beak and transfer it to the, to the, to the Shinkansen train? And when he did that, he found that the train was making much less noise. <coughs> Sorry, I have a... Yeah, the train was making much less noise. And therefore, we have this brilliant example of, of imitation of form. The Shinkansen train, the kingfisher. Actually, if you go to research on Shinkansen train, you'll find the owl is also has been the, the owl. The technology of the owl has also been brought into uh, the train, but you know um, that's more for research and things like that. Just to help you understand how everything that we see in nature is a, is has can be engineered to to suit our technology. The second is mimic process. So, how can you mimic the process of nature? What is it in nature that you can mimic? It's a brilliant example of the, the East Gate Mall in Harare. Uh, apparently, uh, the Mick, Pier, Mick Pierce is the architect of this mall. And when he was asked to commission, when he was asked to build this mall, uh, he, uh, he was given one challenge. And the challenge was that he, the, 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 the people who wanted to build the mall did not want too much air conditioning. They said, minimize the air conditioning. Can you believe you are an architect and you're asked to build a mall in Harare, which is a very hot, humid place, and you don't have to use, you can't use too much air conditioning. Now, any architect would have run away from that project, but not Mick Pierce. Fortunately for us, Mick Pierce was also an ecologist, which meant he, he studied termites. And when he looked at the termite mound, he found that the termites have this intricate, intricate way of, of constructing tunnels, which lets the cool air in the night and warm air in the morning. And they have to maintain that air con So it's actually an air conditioned house for the termite because they have to maintain their food at a certain temperature, right? And so therefore, it is an extensive research on this, okay? Unbelievable amount of research, how we just photograph inside the mound and all that. And you won't believe it. Today, you go to Eastgate Center, you, you, you Google it, and you will find Eastgate Center uses only 35% air conditioning. The question I'm asking therefore is, have we got, somewhere have we gone wrong in the way we make our air conditioning? Right? And one of the things that we're trying to do at IIT Madras campus is actually find out if we can build a house using this technology because, you know, I know that it's not going to happen in my time, 
but surely 100 years from now, we can't afford to have these air conditioners. So what will humanity do is a question that we can ask ourselves now. So therefore, uh, imitation of form, imitation of process. And the third thing is imitation of the system. A mangrove forest is the system. Lots of things are connected, interconnected. They take care of themselves. But can we imitate a mangrove forest? Can we imitate the process that goes on? But mind you, none of this, you even touch anything, okay? You just have to look at the engineering principles and, 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 and therefore, this is a classic example of the imitation of the mangrove forest. It's called the Kallenborg uh, Industrial Symbiosis, where all these factories are set up in such a way that each factory uses the raw uses as raw materials the waste of another factory. So if you and I set up two different factories, you will use the waste that I produce, and I will use the waste that somebody else has produced. Everybody uses everybody's waste, which is what the mangrove forest does. So essentially what we have learned are there can be imitation at three levels, imitation of form, imitation of process, imitation of, uh, of systems, right? So that's the basic understanding of biogroup. Now, what do we do? What do we do? We have to apply it. Because on the one hand, we can say, yes, this is what I learned, but how do I, how do I apply it? I go, of course, for applying anything at all, including biomimicry, there's a process. What is the process? The process can be twofold. One is I look at nature and I try to design something. For instance, I walk into a forest and I find a lotus leaf. And I, I, I you know, it vets my curiosity. I say, what? Why is everything else so dirty except the lotus leaf? And I look further and I find that the lotus leaf, if I examine the lotus leaf from a, from a curiosity mindset, you don't have to be an engineer for this. Your curiosity minds that I find that the lotus leaf has built small microstructures, very, very small microstructures. And when the water falls on the lotus leaf, the water cannot remain on the lotus leaf, it washes away. And when it washes away, it washes away the dirt along with everything else. And therefore, in spite of everything around you, the lotus leaf remains clean. Now, I can stop there. I can also ask myself, wait, what am I learning? I'm learning a brilliant engineering technology engineered by nature. How can I use it? How can I imitate it? How can I, how can I copy it? Where in the world will I want such an application? I can look at myself and say, wait, school uniforms get dirty, right? Can I make fabric out of the lotus leaf technology? Can I make microstructures on the fabric? Therefore, when children go to school and come back in the evening, they're not as dirty, which means I can save soap and things like that. But you won't believe it, there is a company in, in the world called Lotusan Paints, L-O-T-U-S-A-N, which actually makes paint using this technology, which means you paint your house with Lotusan and you don't have to worry about the dirt. So that's biology to design. You look at something and you imitate, right? So there are some specific, these are the, I'm not going to get into this now because it's not the time. But there is a process going to biology, looking at it, step one, step two, step three and all that. The, the, the other way, the other approach of biomimicry is challenge design. Go back to the Mick Pierce example, right? You're given a problem to solve and you use biomimicry, you use nature to solve that problem, which again, it's got, it's got a process, step one, step two, step three, step three. Two approaches. One is I look at nature and I imitate. Lotus Sun is a classic example. The other is I have a problem and I imitate. The, the Mick Pierce, Eastgate Mall is a brilliant example. Right? So what I'm trying to do with my, with my students and with students all over the world, I'm trying to get it into schools. I'm having difficulty, but doesn't matter. That's not, that's what life is about. What I'm trying to get into for the last six months now, very hard is trying to get into schools, trying to get into colleges, trying to get into all sorts of, you know, talk, talk to the government, everything saying, why can't this be the way of life? So for us, for that, there is, this is what I do. This is the curriculum. So uh, I have started to understand that students or anyone else in the world cannot work unless they have a problem to solve, right? And therefore, I told myself that what I need to do is to give them a problem to solve. So therefore, I've chosen the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which means each of them picks up a goal that is useful to the world that needs to be solved. And this is the curriculum on the left. Most of them are engineering and technology students, but this is technology agnostic, so anyone can come there. We teach creative problem solving, we teach design thinking, we teach curiosity, we teach systems thinking, prepare the students mindset, take them to the United Nations sustainable goals. And, and you won't believe what happens at the end of it. And you will see those examples. 
every student comes back with an invention that is sustainable and which leads to transformation. So that's why I, I am. I think you know I, I really want to do this for the rest of my life. Uh, so what are we learning? We these are the goals. So you know, and it, you you won't believe the amount of work that goes into a student's work. You know, choosing the goal itself is is about two weeks long because the, all these goals are so powerful, so important, so significant, so relevant. That for a for a student to say which is the one that I want to choose probably is the most difficult. But I told them, uh, I I tell them to look for an emotional connect. What is it amongst the seventeen goals that 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 you know rings your heart and you need to solve? Because we can't solve a problem that is not ours, right? We don't look after neighbors' children unless we look after our own. So there has to be an emotional connect between you and the problem we want to solve. So that's the seventeen goals for you. Uh, I also have this website. It's called the National Association of Engineers. It doesn't have to be. It's engineering agnostic. These are the seven, uh, 14 grand engineering challenges that have to be solved over the next 50 years. Uh, but this is not. I mean, this is not so relevant right now. I'm just telling you where we get the problems from. So this is the process. This is this is the real heart of biomimicry, right? So this is the process. You actually go through each one of these processes. As, so this is the question. I say, what do I want to solve? And then I look at how, and that, I tell you, this is where the students start to, uh, 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 start to get transformed. Because suddenly they say, I want to solve a problem. But how does nature solve that problem? That's what it is. That's the question. Any problem you get, whether it's team building, whether it's leadership, anything at all, the next question you ask is, how does nature solve it? And I'll show you a website which tells you how nature solves it. And then you choose that organism that solves it. For instance, you can choose the termite mound, you can choose the lotus leaf, whatever, depending on the context. I can't choose the termite mound if I'm in, in the Arctic region. So therefore the context is important. And then I translate, I pick up the strategies of that, of that organism and I put it in the real world. So that's the process. And, and what happens is, this is, this is biomimicry 2.0. I still haven't even started about it. These are the design principles of nature. These are the principles that nature uses when she designs. We will have to look at nature as an innovator. We will have to look at nature as a genius. And we will have to look at her as someone who creates stuff. And these are the principles she follows. She uses energy only when, only freely available energy. She recycles all her materials. She's resilient to disturbances. And that's a lovely leadership lesson there, right? How, how do leaders come back from problems? Nature tends to optimize, doesn't build large houses, simply optimizes. Nature provides, you give something, she gives something. Nature runs on information. She, she, she's a computer scientist. Nature uses chemistry. This is what stuns all my IIT colleagues, right? They say, what? Nature... There's a lovely case study of Nike. I will tell you that later if you have a if you have a break. Uh, nature builds abundant resources. It doesn't for nature anything that's abundant is gold, right? We dig for gold, which is rare. Nature says no. What is abundant is gold for me. Lo nature is locally attuned, which means that you know I don't go to Jaipur and get and marvel for my house in Madras. I look for things around my house. Just five kilometers away, there is apparently a rule in Assam saying you can't build a house if you can't find the resources five kilometers away from your house. Because every time I travel, I pollute the atmosphere. And finally, nature, nature uses its shape for its function. So these are the design principles of nature. What we have learned up to now is that we can learn from nature. There are two approaches. There is the process and there is this design principles of nature. That's all we have learned, really. And of course, you can use the UN goals if you're a student and things like that. I want to get into application now. Application of biomimicry as to what, what my students have done and what is possible. It's not as if what my students have done. It is if a set of students have done it, the whole, whole world can do it. That is the principle. So that's what it is, right? So I have just shown you some examples. And if you, if you look at the world, the biomimicry, there are industries in biomimicry, there are collaborations. So, you know, we, we, can, we, we can talk on and on. I, I've just given you a sample of what the potential of biomimicry can be. You can collaborate with Lotusan, you can become an industrialist, any one of you can do whatever you want once you believe that nature is the great engineer. And a lot of business ideas, leadership ideas, 
and talking to some company saying, how can you learn leadership from my own age? What is it that nature teaches you by leadership? I'm also, I'm also learning to be a coach and I'm learning that nature is a brilliant coach. I can learn coaching with my own age, right? With, with, with nature. This is not, this is more for the research scholars. They wanted to do how to do business and all that. And finally, um, this is my slide. We can, we can use it in any way. It can, it can transform us, right? Transformative innovation is that innovation that will change the future. Uh, disruptive innovation changes the present, right? I, I drink I, uh, from a cup with a handle and I make two. about a challenge. Uh, uh, this, is, um, this is the innovation I was talking about, sustaining innovation, disruptive and transformative. Right, and finally, this is the lady who started it all. So I, I can't do a presentation without honoring her. Her name is Jan Echa. So that's what she did. And uh, so I, I, I think, yeah, I, I can talk on and on, but I'm more interested in the questions that you may ask. So, um, so that's what, right? So I'm going to stop presenting and I'll come back to a, I'll come back to a page that I want to show you, but after some questions. Uh, yeah. uh, so. Thank you, Shiva. I think uh, the underlying statement of your entire presentation, which uh, I think stood out very clearly was conscious, <coughs> of life's genius. That was a brilliant statement. I think that was an amazing statement and uh, very happy that there's so much that is there which you are able to capture so very wonderfully and present it to us. It's absolutely brilliant. Thank you very, very much. And um, uh, I, I do not see any questions for you, so you are very good. I think uh, the... <laughs> It's, you just opened the, like somebody has just said, uh, it's been a, a eye-opener, wonderful presentation in a nutshell. So, well, uh, I, I think uh, this is a skill which you have picked up from nature. Nature also doesn't, nature contains everything very beautifully and presents it to you that you do not have anything to ask from it. And I also like the fact that uh, you use the, Feminine gender with reference to nature, that's not something which very many people do. And so, uh, well, I can only see comments. Uh, uh, I, so I, yeah. We'll, yeah, I, 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 uh, <laughs> so we'll just, we'll just wait for uh, yeah. things to, uh, people to absorb what you have said. And uh, I, I'm sure uh, a few, ah, now there are a few questions coming in for you. So I'll start with the I'll start with the very first question. Tara is trying to say something. She's muted. I think. Tara, you're uh, no no no. You got to switch on your mic. Mic can't hear you. Tara can't hear you. Can't hear you. Can't hear you, Tara. She maybe no, no, has to increase her volume. Huh? Maybe uh, Tara, she's unmuted. Tara, one sec, one sec, one sec. Uh, Tara, you, nobody heard you. Couldn't hear you at all. So I think the volume, you got to switch on your mic and increase the volume. Still hear you. Yeah, just give her a bit of time. Yeah, she'll come back. Yeah. Okay. So the next question, uh, the first question to you is uh, training center and IIT. Uh, okay. You could answer it along with uh, something else. How important is it to have some infrastructure to back up the translation of an idea into reality? How do we make this happen on a small scale at home, for instance? Yeah. So... So that's the next step. Yes, uh, true. Uh, that's what, what uh, yeah, I don't have the infrastructure now, but what I am trying to do is at least these 22 students now, all their ideas, uh, try and find out if they can be attached to a lab. You see that, that that's, a, that's a completely different, uh, different uh, what should I say, uh, challenge. 
right? Once it's now sanitary napkin, for instance, we take a sanitary napkin, what do we do with it? That's a collective decision we have to take. So two or three of my friends are saying, can we? So I, I really don't have an answer to that, but I know I know that the next step, and I, I'm going to be working towards that. So we, we, we have some people in IIT who are saying, let's take it to the next step. But right now, you are right, I don't have an answer. I'm hoping for alumni support, hoping for alumni support to support such an initiative to create an infrastructure just for biomimic. So we can call it the biomimicry laboratory or something like that. Yeah, I'm so sure. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure that will happen very soon. And that's why and uh, I'm sure you'll come up with it. And that will be your contribution towards transformative innovation. So you got to innovate a solution to how to commercialize all every idea that will come. I'm sure that will happen, Shiva. All the very best to you. The next question is, Price can see 360 degrees. Uh, is there anything that has been mimicried from that? Um, yeah, I suppose so. It depends on the problem we want to solve. I'm sure it's helicopters or people who are in defense probably are looking at it. I know, I know a lot of research is going on into it. The, the question is the question is to discover that and to put it in context, right? I know that flies can see three and sixty, but is it relevant to your context? Can you build it in your context? That's where the, the, the challenge will be. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Anita, uh, thanks you for the interesting presentation. She also asks you, how do you ensure active access to ecologists and biologists of your engineering students to solve collaboratively? There you are. There you are, your answer is coming. There's somebody interested in taking the idea forward. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yes, sir. Uh, talk to Anita. Anita uh, actually works at Korea University. So you have another person who's, uh, who's yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, to Anita's question, uh, one of the things that we are learning is when, though the, out of about 22 students, we had seven of them from the biotechnology group. The others are all from different branches of engineering, number one. Number two, I'm also teaching biomimicry to, to, seven, to seven young teachers of a school called Sevalia, which is a school for, uh, for uh, poor children. And they're all, I'm teaching them in Tamil. And I'm seeing that they have no knowledge of engineering, but the very, the very intention to imitate nature and to bring it out seems to be the most important, the curiosity and all that. Engineering technology is important, but you can work collaboratively with an engineer. But to start off your journey on biometry, you don't need to be an engineer. Anyone can start doing it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Shiva. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, any online course available? That is a question. Yes, I, I, you know, I can make it available to you. The one that I did is quite interesting. Nothing so great. So, for the sake of a certificate, it's good. But right now, there, there, there are one or two case cases. If you look at, if you if you go to Google and say online course biometry, you will get some. But don't spend too much money because there are some very nice websites that you can actually learn from. Okay. Can you... Yes, uh, at the end of, before I, before I leave this, I'll point out two, I'll show you two websites that you can actually start learning from. We can correspond to each other. We can learn and all. Oh, that will be very nice. That will be very nice. Uh, Shiva, another question to you. Are these innovations shared through the open source philosophy or will their use be restricted through patents? So, uh, yes, of course, because there are a lot of people, for instance, Nike has opened, has completely opened up. It's, uh, there's a lovely case study of Nike, uh, uh, Chandran, where actually, apparently, uh, I just finished reading it yesterday in a book called Biomimicry for Business, where uh, uh, Nike was making Nike, Nike makes shoes that, that is the adherent to the problem, right? And apparently, it was causing a lot of problems where the smell of that chemical was so, 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 uh, so repugnant that people were running away from the factory. So Nike got the feedback and then they made the chemical, they looked at nature and they said, how do geckos, how do geckos? To hold on to rocks. They picked up the water-based solutions and they have come out with an invention to make chemicals which is toxic free. But the problem they had, the problem they had was at the factory in Nike, there was a line for Nike, there was a line for Puma, there was a line for Adidas. And therefore, if, even if Nike was using uh, good chemicals, not Adidas and Puma. And for the first time in the world, for the first time in the world, all these shoemakers joined together and actually said, let's share each other's technology. And that's where the collaboration happened. So I think there is patents being filed, but, but I, I'm not sure about where the future will
to go. But in answer to the question, yes, patent is being filed, but you know, uh, but not in too many areas. People still haven't discovered the man. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Said if we consciously emulate life's genius, uh, people would. Uh, applying for patents and, you know, start collaborating. Like I did. And, um, the the uh, answer to your question, Chandran, yes, your, uh, is this entire talk will soon come up on our uh, MNS uh, YouTube with you. Uh, Umesh Bhai will make it happen in the next two, three days. I'll have a link which I will be posting on our Google group. Yeah. Uh, Anything, uh, I do not see any other questions. So maybe if you, you could share those two websites, there could be more questions. Shiva, yeah. so you could go ahead yeah. and share those two websites. Thanks. Okay. Shiva, that was a wonderful presentation. We learned a lot of new things, and I think uh, we may require more presentations like this. We are looking forward to uh, your contribution to our. Uh, members of the society. Uh, Thank you very yeah, much. Going to, uh, share a couple of... Uh, you, you can see something? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, this is called the Ask Nature uh, .org. So what happens is once you, once you have a problem and you say, how does nature solve the problem? You go to this website. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a data of, of about 5,000, 6,000 organisms. And you find out what your problem is. Supposing a problem is to break down, chemically break down, you click on chemically break down and it tells you all the things in nature that chemically break down, right? So therefore you can look at bacteria, you can look at the chemicals in oregano, you can look at uh, cellulose digested, you can look at uh, organisms that digest blood, you can find out how nature does this and imitate that strategy. For instance, let's say, you go to bacteria, um, you go to this web, you, you, you want to choose this, you want to Schwenala Honey Densis, mm -hmm. and uh, you, you go there and you find out how Schwenala Odinesis bacteria attach to and reduce iron oxide, right? They, they chemically break down stuff. And then you can find out whether you can, you can use that technology for your own invention. So therefore, almost everything that, that an inventor needs to do is there contained in these in these uh, sentences? So get store of this. So this is for leadership, right? You want to you want to make a team. You go to get store, distribute. So they say, what is the strategy of the calyx or the burdock? What is the strategy of the honeycombs? What is the strategy of of uh, of uh, of walls? That you know all those things. I, I can go on. So therefore, what is the stat stat strategy of plant hoppers? Let's see what, what it contains. And this is where your, your research comes in. So this is how they do that. Hind legs of plant hoppers produce powerful synchronous jumps thanks to mechanical linkage. So if you want, you can use this for, for maybe for making a toy or making anything that, that fits your application. You can also, you can also go to, uh, so that's the website, asknature.org. Um, the other website is uh, uh, biomimicry.org. Yeah, so this is the other website, uh, biomimicry.org, which talks about what is... So this is where I learned all my stuff from. For those people who want to learn, you know, we, you, you can always write to me, of course. You can write to me, you can call me, do WhatsApp, whatever you want, and we can, I can take you through the website. It's got some powerful stuff. It's got everything that you want to learn. So this is where you will really want to learn. It says uh, biomimicry toolbox. So this is where what I said, I, I learned everything that I did from this toolbox. So uh, that's what it is. Right, so that's the, these are the biomimicry.org and, and asknature.org. Tara, uh, is your uh, mic all right? You wanted to say something to us? Yes, my yes, yes, yes. Now, can, now can you hear me? 
Yes, yes, yes. Very yeah, clearly. Yeah. Well, actually, I, I tried to send a message, but I'm technologically challenged, so it didn't go through. But uh, what I did uh, want to say that, that I found many of my questions already answered by the time uh, the end of the program happened. I just want to thank you for a wonderful concept. And I'm so happy that you are at IIT and uh, it can get into engineering solutions. Truly, it is the way the, for the future for engineering and businesses and architecture and so much more. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tara. Yeah. Thanks, Tara. Uh, I do not see any more questions. So uh, once again, Shiva, thank you very, very much. Shiva, can you also add in your... Uh, mobile number, if you don't mind people calling you and talking to you, or would you? Yeah. So yes. I, I, uh, I've sent it there, Vijay. Yeah, yeah, I just saw it. I just saw it. So thank you very much, Shiva. That was uh, really, really wonderful. Uh, and I knew that uh, this is how it would be after my uh, couple of uh, conversations that I had with you on the phone. Yeah. So. I knew that you will trigger a lot of uh, curiosity, not just curiosity, but I, I still would like to repeat uh, what uh, underlined your entire thinking process and your presentation and your urging conscious emulation of life's genius. I love that. Love so, it only. Yeah. And so thank you. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the only, I, I think. For me, I, I want to take it to schools. Good, good. Because I'll tell you why I want to take it to schools. I, I, I live, I live in Santom. I can see the ocean and all that. I, I told that the ocean will come into my house, maybe forty years from now. But I'm not, I'm not going to be alive forty years from now. Seriously. But, but my my grandchildren's children are going to be alive, and I'm saying that today's school child, who is about let's say twelve years old, when he or she is 40 years from now, she'll be 52. And if we can, if that person at 52 looks for an alternative to living the way we live, that is where I would have contributed to life, right? I would have, I would have probably gone away, but I would have told this little child that there is an alternative, that, that you can prevent a natural catastrophe by being an inventor. So that's why I think what I want to do is to take it to schools, Vijay, more than colleges. Because when, when we tell them, what happened in my students' case was even though I never, the intention was never to teach sustainability. It was not that intention. But in spite of that, in spite of that, all the inventions that came, all the innovations that happened were all sustainable. And I'm learning, therefore, biomimicry automatically transfers you to a sustainable way of life. So if you want to teach sustainability, maybe it's a good idea to teach biomimicry. That's what I, I thought I'd share. Yeah, thanks, Shiva. Thank you very, very much. And I, uh, uh, you know, wish you only the very best in all your endeavors. Uh, we are very noble. And the fact that you started working with Shevalia, which is which is very good. It is very good. I think, uh, you know, we've all, in the, in the past 25 years, I think uh, the whole world has learned that change happens only from the bottom. So you started at the bottom of the pyramid and... Uh, and you're building it up, which is uh, which is wonderful, which is very nice. So, thanks once again. Thanks on for the opportunity. Thanks for the opportunity, Sudhakar and Vijay. Yeah, really nice. uh, always. Thank welcome. you, Mr. It was a wonderful presentation, Shiva. It opened uh, uh, many more uh, uh, vistas uh, for every one of us. Thank you. Yeah.